Hello, my name is Joanne Knight, and in this Barn Buddy, I'd like to share with you something that I figured out in Repeat Patterns that has helped me with auditioning quilt blocks, so I hope you like it. A lot of times we are looking at a quilt and we get a little bit stumped on what to put in any particular quilt block. So what I like to do is import an image and you can go to file and import image right here and it brings up the default file that we got with Creative Studio version 6. I have images in my jump drive and this is where these came from. These are the latest set of blocks that I got for the Southern Bell Anniversary Quilt 2. So I need to stare at a couple of these for a while and look at them and see what patterns I want to use on them. That's what I did with this particular block right here and this image in these groups. The very first thing that you're going to do is bring in the image and it's going to set that image on the point of origin right here. You can't resize the image, but that doesn't bother me. I just want to see how the patterns fit on it and how they lay on it and if I'm going to be pleased with the outcome. The next thing that I need to do is either do a right click on my CAD screen or select the new shortcut that is F3 and be able to tone down that image just a little bit. I like the bright colors, but I need to be able to see the patterns. This one is a star, so I'm going to be in my pattern tab and I'm going to type in the word star, if I can spell it correctly, and I see that perhaps this pattern right here may be one that I like for this block. We have the new drag and drop, which is really terrific in version 7, but as you can see, that brings in the block at a big size and I have to change it to either F9 anchors or F10 anchors, which are the best ones because they anchor in the center. When I pull that pattern in to fit the block, then I need to go to view all to bring it back into focus. And that's a little bit of extra work and I feel just a little bit bad about whining about it because it really is so much easier with drag and drop. But let me show you what I figured out that's even easier than that. Once you make the image just a little bit lighter, go to your measure tool, which would be Alt-M or one of the icons on your tool strip. And I'm going to measure this image because I don't really know what size it is. And it's about 6.30 or 6 and a quarter one direction and 6.30 in the next direction. So I'm going to select my block. I don't have to worry about changing the size of it. I'm going to go to repeat patterns. And the first thing that repeat patterns would like me to do in version seven is click a point using the head or the mouse. Upper left corner is my default. So I'm going to click the upper left corner of the image. And that still brings the block in at the design size. However, if I go right here to set pattern size and I type in 6.30 and hit enter, that brings that pattern size exactly into the image size. This one is a little bit off center but that's okay because the image is not going to be exactly the way that the quilt block is. This is the cool part besides changing it to the size of the image. With the setup box still open, I can scroll down to a completely different pattern in my pattern tab, left click on that one, and it changes to that pattern and still keeps the 6.3 size because I haven't done anything with the bottom of the setup box or what the total size is or what the repeats are or the rows, I can just continue clicking different patterns on this image and they're all gonna come in in exactly the same spot. And when I find one that I like and that I'm happy with on this image, then I can say OK and it leaves that pattern. I don't have to worry about setting anything up. So I was pretty excited whenever I figured that one out. 
I'm going to say OK on this one. And now you can see that I have the image that I need. Now, suppose you don't want the image to cover the entire block. Let's go find a block pattern. We'll just pick this one, for instance. I'm not concerned about the size, but we're going to, let's say, audition this in these corners right here. I need to, once again, measure and see what just my corner is because that's all that I'm dealing with. So this one is 209, so we're going to say that it's a 2 by 2. I'm going to go back to repeat patterns. I have to click a spot on the quilt with version 7. I can choose the upper left again and left click. The pattern goes in here. I don't have to select it. I'm going to say 2 inches because that's pretty close to what the size is. And now it puts that pattern in that particular spot right there. Once again, I can change patterns just by clicking on them and they will all inherit that size of the two inches that I placed in there. Freeze aspect is turned off, but that doesn't really bother me one way or the other. And just like that, I can audition all of the patterns that I have in my pattern list for any particular point on the quilt and decide whether that pattern is going to work for me or not work for me. I really like that a lot. If I have a pattern like this one right here and I want to rotate that star around, I can just select my angle for the individual pattern size, type in whatever I angle I want, and it will rotate that pattern, and I still have the setup box open. So that's an easy fix to be able to say, okay, let's see what the star looks like in a different corner to be able to audition that one. I hope you like this new little trick. I think it is really going to come in handy and cut our workload down whenever we're auditioning patterns onto the images in our quilt. Thank you.